Hey guys, what's up? Back again with another season of OpenNet. Uh, season 2, we've made it, we're back again. Did you miss us? Did you remember us? Uh, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're here now. Uh, we're, we're here to live in the moment. A whole other season of Rocket League. We're mere three days? Three days from the draft? We're getting so close. Yeah. Right, we're we're yeah. going after again. Uh, we're it's uh, we're all excited. Um, happy to have OpenNet back. Uh, gives us something to do. Gives us a Rocket League to talk about. And um, it's going to be one of the most exciting seasons we have yet, um, especially one of the most exciting seasons of OpenNet. Um, we are back. We're better. Uh, we are going to be stronger. And we're just going to we're, we're gonna turn out some uh, good, good podcasts for you. Uh, joining me today, well, first, first, you got yours truly, Quilly, FL expert, borderline PL player. I kind of suck at the game, but that's neither here nor there. Well, we'll talk about that later. Uh, joining me, we have returning guest. We have Flumsky. How you guys doing, man? I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to get into the draft. I got the hard hat, the vest behind me. It's time to get to work on season 15. Yeah, it wouldn't be the same if we didn't have that ladder there. Hard hat, nice, <laughs> nice touch. And he's got the safety vest. He's prepared. He's prepared. That's right. Safety first. <laughs> uh, we have first time guest joining us, Zach V. You know, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here with you guys. You know, I've watched you guys for the past three seasons. So thank you guys for the opportunity. And I can't wait to get started. Yeah, hey, man. Welcome. Uh, uh, great to have you here. You love new faces. Um, always take a new face to get on here. Uh, so I appreciate we appreciate you coming on to join us. Uh, to get right into the show, uh, we are we got a lot to talk about here. We got whole bunch of whole bunch of subjects. Uh, you, you know you know what it, you know what we do here. We talk Rocket League. We talk car soccer. So uh, start it off. Get into the draft preview, and we already know who's going to be talking about it. The FL section to start it off. It's going to be me, obviously. Lucky for you guys, I'm not on Eclipse, so I don't have to worry about you guys. Don't have to worry about me talking about Eclipse too much. Uh, they don't have an FL team, so so we're looking at looking out here. <laughs> Draft preview though, um, we have uh, we have what teams to be uh, looking out for? Who's got the best picks? Who we like? Um, first, we will be talking about the Bears. The Bears have two top five picks, being the four and the five pick in the first round. At, that, that's insane that we're able to pull those off and get those. It gives them a extremely fair opportunity to pick two teammates for their one retained player, Hospital Ball, who we'll be talking about later, to get these picks. They made a laundry list. The, the, the trade was a laundry list. It was insane. I don't know the math on that, how they worked this out and got to agree on this was insane. If we were to go through it all, we'd be here until the draft on Saturday trying, trying to figure it out. It, it yeah. was that insane. I mean, the, to, to the amount of trading this offseason, like, I'm jealous that we didn't really get in on it, but I mean, just to start off with this and how, like you said, how they got four and five. I mean, the, the amount of trading this off season is uh, it's bonkers. It's crazy how much trading went on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you love to see it keeps it interesting. Yeah, anything to say on that, Zach? I mean, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of trades happen, especially in the transaction. Every time I'm at school and I see a transaction, I already know it's a trade. It's yeah. the trades have just been going on this whole season, you know. So uh, with the Bears this season, that that's amazing for them. Yeah, you can expect one thing, and that's a lot of trades to be happening. I don't know. It's, it's huge. It's, it's cool to probably the behind the scenes, the amount of stuff going on in the back there. You know they're always moving. They're always on top of these things. What team wants to give themselves the best opportunity to get that coveted championship? Uh, but uh, going out for all these – they went all out for these picks. Uh, it gives them a great opportunity, like I said, to build around who's. Um, it shows that they have confidence in that player to pretty much lead them the way. Maybe, maybe that's, that's their goal is to build around who's. Um yeah, that's pretty crazy. Uh, great trades, great opportunity. You love to see it. Uh, moving on, yeah. we're going to the Pirates. Uh, the Pirates, um, they, no trades in FL, I believe. Um, going to qu say quote me on that. Keep <laughs> uh, on chat, I'll fact check you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those, yeah, yeah they will. <laughs> um, they have kept their own picks, but they have the they they kept all their picks, but they have the first pick in each round, which literally they literally have everyone to pick from. They could anyone they want, and then they could build around it. And then they have the pr the premier picks in the second and third round being the first. Um, so they pretty much it it's it's as good as you can get for an average draft. It's like it's exactly what you want. But like. Yeah. You, you're pretty much in all the good spots of each round. You get the best first round player, you get the best second round player, and you get the best third round player. Yeah. I think that the, like from the other side too, like the Pirates' big position to have to like the first overall pick in a in the not only the first overall pick in FL, it's the first overall pick of the draft day. Yeah. So like that's a big responsibility, and like some players take that that role like of being that first player selected 
of the season, 15, and they run with it. But man, if <laughs> I tell you what, if it was me, I'm crumbling with that pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe that most for like if you have the first round pick and let's say all three rounds, I feel like that's just a great start off for the season. You know, you're building your team, you're seeing who you put your most trust in. And with the Pirates having the first pick in each round, that just gives them more of the gives them more of the leverage for the rest of the season. Yeah, that, that I mean, it's pretty much an ideal thing. That first round pick, they, they have a ton of work to be doing, a whole lot of studying up on who they want to take. It, 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 that's also what's scary about it is you can literally pick from anyone. So it's just yeah. the stress to make that correct pick. That's you know, terrifying. it's it's mostly. Uh, I would like to say it's mostly. It's not like a huge honor to have the first pick because you know last season might have not gone your way, but you know you have a chance to bounce back, and I think the Pirates have a chance to bounce back this season with the first pick. A great way to look at it. Way great way to bounce back. I will be mentioning their uh, bad last season in NFL. Huh? I mean, the call around was not <laughs> ideal for Pirates. But we'll talk about that later. Um, and lastly, we'll be talking about the Aviators. I think they. Honestly, they have a sleeper set of picks. Um, I think it they they're sitting perfectly in the middle of everything to just sit and wait it out. They they just they just keep knocking off names off their board as to who they want. They have the 14th pick, which is very late in the first round. But by then, a whole bunch of names will be knocked off. They'll just be sitting there watching, and then they they can pick as they want. And that that player that they pick is who they get to build around. And just six picks later, they got their next two picks. They got the 20 and 21st pick. Um, I th- I think that's ideal because most of the names you'll see most you'll be able to see most of the names that they want. So uh, once they pick their first player, they'll be able to look at who's already avail- still available. The most likely won't be that many gone by then because there's only six being picked after, and they, they pretty much have all the room in the world to build with. Uh, they could be getting two middle round, pit, literally middle of the draft picks, which is a premiere to have. It, it's honestly insane. I think I think they could pull off something special. Yeah, something I like, too, about that kind of setup, and I'll talk about it a little bit more with the CL and AL, is they get their draft done early, too, right? So they can get these three players. They can they can sit back, relax the rest of the draft. They're done stressing. Like you said, they're pretty, like, in-line picks. They're not very far from each other. So, like, they're just done. You know what I mean? Around the middle of the second round, just done with draft, and, they're, and it's over. You know what I mean? They got their roster set up. They're ready to go and start maybe, like, marking down who's gone and then start looking at FAs after the draft. Yeah. You know, I believe most, most of the time there are teams that have big sleeper picks, you know, most sleeper picks do tend to draft very well, especially if they have the 20 and 21st pick, you know, you pick your players up and then you already know what you want to do with your FAs. You know, it's, you just got to go with it. And with the aviators having this pick, I feel like they'll have really three good players. They can build around and look for people to back them up. Yeah. That, that, that gonna say better myself i'm glad i'm glad glad we're all on the same page here and making me feel reassured like i think i know what i'm talking about <laughs> i like to think i do just an fl guy here's the ramble <laughs> exactly F- fl guy in a dream you guys you guys make me look good that's all that's all i gotta ask for uh, that's about all i got for fl moving on to al who's got that covered would you like to now i got yeah i got al and cl covered um i'm gonna be our honorary al guy i'll do what i can to know the best and hopefully that, like you said we'll get some input from everybody else Get your guys in your takes, your input, your, you know what I mean, what's spicy, what's not. Um, so I'm starting this off with a with one of our production guys, Envy, who's done probably, like you said, the most trading in this offseason. But the Jets have six, that's right, six AL picks. Six of them. Um, if I pull that up, let's see. I forget where they all are because there's so many of them. But they have three in the third round and three – or, yeah, three in the third round and three consecutive picks early in the second round. Three, four, and five in the second round. So like you said, you can pick this Wombo combo up early. A lot of retentions in the first round of AL. So, you know what I mean? Real, I don't have the exact number, but realistically, it's, you know what I mean? You're about 20 picks into the draft when the Jets are starting to get these players. So technically still first round picks minus retentions. And then, you know what I mean? You get this Wombo combo. And then you can move on to the third round and kind of sprinkle some players in there, some support guys, some sleeper picks like Zach was talking about. So, I mean, I I don't know what your all's take is on six picks, but that is the most I've ever seen. Six is insane. I don't even know six people in MLE, let alone picking <laughs> for one league. That's insane. That's yeah, insane. six six picks is insane, you know. Yeah. As I said before, looking at transactions and seeing, like, especially if it's not even my league because I'm an ML player, but seeing all these other leagues having – all these types of picks and just trading that shows that the jets are determined to want to win this season and they're proving it. 
Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like I said, there's not a, not a lot you can add to that other than, like, they have six picks, right? It's crazy. Can't, can't, uh, so, can't I'm going to move on to my next team, which is the Lightning, rocking two top six picks, technically. Like I said, with the retentions in place, these are going to be the two of the top six players drafted. Um, and they have a third round towards the end. So, solid chance to, to get the two players that are probably going to anchor this team. Uh, let's see where the Lightning at. Uh, they're going to get two solid players to for this team. They got MST and they got Sykes still on the board on their team still with their, with their not affecting draft retentions. So they're going to, you know what I mean? They're going to have their five player base. They're going to have that solid rotation. They're going to get two people in early and then move on and grab somebody late in the draft. Yeah. Lightning with the top, top two, six picks. That's, that's just amazing. You know, every team just has amazing picks right now and the lightning, they have a, they have a chance to, you know, rebound and use these picks for the right people. So. And like, like you said, with the, with the, with the bears, those top picks, pretty insane to get. Um, also just like with the pirates, uh, the, the top picks, the stress on them to make the right picks, you have the entire, the entire league to pick from. And it's just, Rest to make the right picks and get that pairing. Yeah, you're you're giving you're basically giving the first two picks the the open saying, hey, tell us who you want, we'll do it for you. So lightnings, they're set right now. Yeah. So then after that, my next my next team I'm looking at in AL is uh, the Comets, another team that traded up to grab two first round picks. So again, like I said earlier, there's there's a lot of retentions in AL in the first round. So Realistically, these two picks for the Comets going to come in the top 20 of the draft, uh, and then they have an early third-round pick, so they're going to completely ignore the second round, don't care about it, grab somebody in the third pick in the third round, and just be done with it, watch the teams go, start figuring out, again, who they're going to pick up off of AL, or uh, FA, not AL. Um, but th- that first pick that the Comets have is the second overall pick of players drafted. Got the elite at number one, so props to them for keeping that first pick. Knights have a retention, and then the Comets going to be picking the second drafted player. And uh, I, I mean, first round. You said two first, two first round picks again. Yeah. Yep. Another team that traded for two first. I don't get how many first round picks there are <laughs> that these many teams keep getting multiple. Uh, but uh, I mean, good on them, I guess, to be pulling <laughs> these off. I don't. know. It's good. Good. Good looks for them for the for for the season. Good hopes or high hopes again. The pressure. Yeah, I don't know what type of intimidations the Comets did to get two first-round picks, but they must have done a lot of intimidation to get those picks. And especially having a third-round pick, those two first picks are going to come in real handy for them. So, yeah. tops to them. Yep, and then moving on to the next team, we'll keep rapid fire here. The Wolves. First-round retention, uh, who I believe was traded away. I need somebody to fact-check me on that in the chat. Um, so they have a first-round retention that was traded away, but... They still managed to get four total picks in the draft. They're kind of all over the place. They're kind of spread out, but they have two second rounders about middle, a couple picks apart, and two third rounders about the same. So they're, they're kind of in the same spot in those two rounds, but lost that first round retention, still have two players on their team in Gang Gang and Texas Cyclone, and still have four players to pick from. So looking at kind of where our pool, like our player pools ended up and how many players are going to be on the uh the uh, FA sheet after the draft being able to start with six players on your team is such a leg up right now so uh, i mean props again to these people that are getting all these trades in but four picks good number of picks kind of later in the draft but you got two 11 fives to start your roster right in the middle of AL so you got a lot of room to draft and a lot of room to build around yeah the building the building's all you can ask for uh for some, some teams that they some teams give everything they had to get an early pick. Some teams want to trust their building process. Yeah, a lot of teams that usually keep their retentions and then trade them away, you know, that sounds more of like a rebuild. So Wolves are in a rebuild right now, and they want to they wanna make the perfect team to try to strive for the playoffs. Yeah, yeah a little, little say bounce so. back action for them. Yeah. Um, and then the Hurricanes, right? <laughs> this team somehow always win in championships. What, they get four last year? I mm-hmm. wish I remember that. I think it was four yeah. across the different leagues all over the place, up and down. So this Hurricanes team won the threes AL championship and still ended up with the fourth 
overall pick of drafted players. Again, there's a retention at, at two. So the fourth player being picked, the team that just won the championship somehow moved all the way up to number four overall, which is bonkers. And then they still have they still have three picks after that. They got a second round and two third rounders. So again, I don't know who they're selling their soul to and, and where I got to get in on this trade, but to, to win a championship, move to four, and then still have three picks after that, uh, it's unbelievable. So props to these these uh, these the leadership on these teams for doing that. But I mean, that's crazy. Uh, I was going to say, after, after the Hurricanes' dominance in the finals last season, how many <laughs> they won, the, I don't know what kind of Rocket League gods they're, they're, they're outreaching <laughs> oh, yeah. to that they're getting this. <laughs> This is unfair. We need we need to we need we need to go against them. I don't know what's going on here. Hurricanes got something up their sleeve. Yeah, I mean, yeah. All I can say is this: because you're winning championships and you have more picks, it's it. They they want to go back, and you know that that shows the dedication for the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes want to win it, and they prove it every season. And with those yeah. four championships, they won it. So props to them. That is just a beauty. Yeah, the only player staying on that team just before we move on to CL is Nim. I believe Lynx Ray was traded away for one of those picks, but still Nim, very solid player. Again, 11-5, so right in the middle of AL, all the room in the world to draft. Like I said, you got that fourth pick. You can pick anybody that you want besides the three players drafted before you. So uh, moving right on, we're going we're gonna to hit CL, my home, where I've been for – this will be my third season now. Um. There wasn't, there was still a lot of, I, I can't say there wasn't much, but there's still a lot of trading going on in CL. The first team I'm going to give props to, the guy that I actually got to step in for on the uh, on the show today is Ruben and the Blizzard. Um, I mean, they got two first rounders in an early third. Again, another team, they're going to get these picks in early. CL, another league that has a lot of first round retentions, and those retentions are higher up. Moving these like later picks in the first round down, like or I guess moving them up is the better way to put it, but where they're technically the earlier players drafted. So again, this this Blizzard team, uh, they're sitting at what's that? One, two, three, four, five, and four and six. The four and six in the first round. Don't know how they do it. They did it. They got these picks. They're gonna again get who they want. They're gonna get it in early, and then they're gonna round that roster up around Ruben himself later on in the draft. And knowing Ruben, he's a he's a very very like support player, support-oriented player, so he can just draft shooters, passers, whoever he wants. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I don't I don't know where these, how many first-round picks are that these, any, these teams <laughs> just keep getting them. I don't know. And uh, what teams are giving up their first-round picks? Uh, they, how how crazy of a move is that? Did you be like, you know what? I don't want a first-round pick. Robert, we'll wait till just, later. We'll figure it out in post. Just take it. Yeah, like <laughs> I look, I look at it now, and you know, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know Emily, but Ruben is a great person, and I could have just imagined the intimidation Ruben, or like the trades that Ruben gave to these people <laughs> for these types of, uh, for these picks. But you know, with this team run by Ruben, he made very good, very good trades, and I'm very excited to see this Blizzard team coming up this season. Yeah, absolutely. Um. And you, Quilly, you mentioned who's trading away these first round picks, and I got the insider scoop. Another really good friend of mine is lacking the Foxes. They traded away their first round pick, um, in in good sense, right? You, they have a, two fourteen fives in him and Kai, and they have Soup coming up from AL. So they got a very solid AL player. He's making moves in CL. He's doing very well, but they still moved that first round pick, and they moved their third round pick, consolidated all in the middle. Got three late second round picks. They're going to start us off uh, on day two of the draft on Sunday with with three picks, very consecutive. They're going to be able to draft. Uh, they can't draft super high with where their salary is at now, um, but they can get the players they want. Another team that's going to end up with six players on their roster, which is huge this season to have that number solidified early. A six players is a lot. That's a it's a lot of heads to deal with. It's a it's a lot of a lot of people you're going to have to get playing time i don't know they they got a whole plan there got a system six people is you only you play five weeks i mean you get like a rotation going you get to get to everyone around but i, I think that's a lot of people you gotta maybe they're maybe they're they're dedicating yeah i mean the foxes that, that that's an that's a, in my opinion 
an okay move, you know, moved all their picks to the second round, you know, with two 14 fives and a 14. There's going to be six people, but, you know, they, they could make it work. They're always in the running for a playoff, so they'll, they'll find a way to make it work and give, give everybody the right playing time that they need. Absolutely. Then another quick quick rapid fire here is another another production guy making moves. The Rhinos used the first overall for retention, but they traded up for two early second round picks. They're going to lock their team in again early on. They're going to be in the first uh, day of the draft with that. Be done. They can get who literally with the, the salaries they got, they can get whoever they want. And if I pull it up. I think they got, yeah, they got a 14, a 13, five and a 13. They got all the room to draft They can pick up who they want, who they need who they think is going to surround that roster out to five and just, you know what I mean, have a bounce back season there for the Rhinos. Yeah, I mean, salary cap, uh, that's that's playing a long haul game there. You're not, you're not worried about much. You, you want to wanna assemble a team, get a, get, a, get a group of people and just put balls in nets better than the other teams. Yeah, I mean, I don't personally know the Rhinos, but I know the Rhinos every season in CO is uh, up and down, but... This draft, they have really good picks, so I would expect them to make a run. Opportunity for change. Most definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another another quick one. We talked about it with the Pirates. Uh, the Eclipse, the first overall pick, technically, again, you know what I mean? The Rhinos have the first pick, but the Eclipse, keeping their, keeping their second overall, which is the first player that's going to be drafted, and then the second in each round going after that. Smart move by them. Quick, just like to prop that out, because they, like you said, with the Pirates, they're keeping that pick. They didn't want to lose it. They want who they want. They're probably going to know who they want. And they're going to take that run, get all their rounds done early, and and ride off into fit season 15. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was all about looking forward. Um, you were talking about flips here? Yep. I'm, not yep. Allowed, I'm, I'm just double-checking because I, I, don't, I don't want to talk about them too much. I get yelled at if I talk about them too much. <laughs> not, not friendly to chat. I talked about them way too much last year. I've reached my quota. Um, pass it over. Yeah, it, it's it, they didn't trade the pick, so it, they're gonna bounce back. I, I could most of these teams that I could just say they're gonna bounce back because they have really good picks or given the option to whoever they want to pick. So, you know, good job to the Eclipse. I can mention their FL team really go to they this one really cool guy who probably wears yellow flannels. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> and then my last one for CL before we move on. Just another quick shout out to the only team in CL that managed to round up four, uh, four picks in CL is the Aviators. They got a uh, they got a fellow caster and chaser. They're keeping black line. They got a first round pick pretty early on. I think it's still top ten technically. And then they're just kind of sprinkled throughout late second round, too early third round. So again, another team that ran it managed to round up four picks in CL with two players. They're going to have six on their roster to start the season. Great position for the Aviators to be. Uh, Same thing as usual, yeah. It's it's every every team that has a good pick, they're gonna do something well. So good for them. I mean, yeah, that 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 got an average. They got an average draft going. Uh, They they, the only team with four picks. Um, I I, they got they got enough opportunity to uh, make something happen. Uh, It's all about what they can what they can do with the with the four picks. Uh, They can either make or break with it and it's a big deal it's all about making those right picks it's not you can have as many picks as you want in the world but if you pick terribly you're done for well i assuming on to ml now right guys so ml uh to start off uh that is my league just saying ml i have the demos the demos have three first round picks in every round they're starting off every round with the first pick so you know, they, w- they they can wish on who they want to pick up. You know, it's the first pick. You know, they have to think strategically a little bit. And, you know, what better option than to have the first pick in every starting round? Always a great position to be in. We, yeah, we talked about with the uh, Eclipse. Talked about it with the Pirates. Smart to just not move that pick around. Uh, yeah, I uh, think it served it more than anything. Uh, I thought... Th- Three first round picks in every round. Am I reading that right? I just think of it as like they had the first pick, the second pick, and the like second pick first round. Sorry, sorry. No, I, I think I've confused myself on that. No, but I, you know I, what I, I'm I, trying to say. Blame me. They, they blame. have the second pick. They have the second pick in all three rounds. I was yeah. say, blame me. I'm a, I'm a bad listener, bad reader. It's, it's on me. I'll take blame for it. Uh, I mean yeah. that same thing with that. What I said before. It's just going with the, the very conservative thing. You can pretty much draft who you want, and then uh, you have the the best picks in the rest of the rounds to. Pick who you want to build around it. 
Right, right. So the next person I next team I actually have is right under them, the Eclipse. The Eclipse literally have the next pick right after them and they have the same exact picks for the for the second round and third round. So they're basically the demos, but the demos just have more of the advantage of picking the players who they want first. So I would say the Eclipse, they they can lead their teams to the playoff if they pick correctly in this upcom- upcoming season. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same same thing we followed on the shadow. It's just like sometimes it's just better to not move. And when you're in a position to have the second overall drafted player and then, uh, you know what I mean, like you said, a top three pick in every round, it's just sometimes it's just smart to stay there, stick to the plan, figure out who you want, and just and get them when they're there. Uh, definitely after a lackluster season last year, for the most part, the Eclipse, uh, they, they got a lot to bounce back. Um <laughs> Not gonna lie, they were not good. As the person I talked about them a lot, they were not. It was really hard. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, uh, I mean, they definitely have a good chance. I have the third, third in every round. Uh, it's 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 a good opportunity. It's a a more than favorable spot than that you could ask for to build a new team to try and fix the wrongs from last season. Um, and hopefully, uh, under new management, uh, shout out Blue Mage Mikey. Um, he hopefully he can he can be the difference maker. <laughs> Not for the on you out in chat. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> for the last team and this team, this team is like the AL team, not AL team, FL team you talked about earlier. I think uh no, the AL team, the Jets, the Hawks. Tell me about it. Transactions. Every time I look in it, I always see Hawks, 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 Hawks. And the Hawks right now, they have two first round picks and they have three third round picks. They are they're making trades like crazy, and that team is going to be phenomenal this season. Willie, go ahead and talk because I want to. I think Zach they made one more today. <laughs> I think oh so. Lord. We see we can't even keep up. We can't even keep up. You got They just we, we they make just, notes throughout the week, and we can't keep up because there's that many yeah. trades happening. Y'all need to y'all need to calm down because we're trying to update this as we go. Have Wait. a game plan built. So they they traded away <laughs> Hecto Chip today. Which, you know what I mean, for that player to find value in being traded for a second round pick, you know what I mean? Keep your head high on that. Moving around, he moved to the Tyrants and the, the Hawks gained a second round pick on top of all their other picks. That's so, just ridiculous in my opinion. Look, the Hawks yeah. the Hawks is that's a rebuild right there. And the Hawks are willing to get rid of all their players. No offense to whoever got traded, but they're willing <laughs> to get rid of all their players and say, Hey, we're gonna win this now. Let's start the yeah. rebuild. That's I'm pack. looking at this too. Hector just he just got promoted to AGM of the Tyrants. So, you know what I mean? Good for him. He got moved over, got go, a go, pick go, out go. of it for the Hawks, and now he's an AGM. So, in a good spot. Uh, Hawks definitely with a power move. Uh, you love to see how it pans out for him. Um, hopefully, it was the right decision. It's one of the it's one of those things. It's a risk to take getting rid of a player you already know. But I mean, I guess them getting management somewhere else. I guess that's something that's been in the works. Maybe they wanted to go there. I don't know, but, but hopefully, it works out for the Hawks. Big move for them, and they got they got a great great opportunity. All righty, now on to PL. PL, P- land. yeah, the, myst- the mystical land of PL is literally their own land. They have their own people, and they only talk to their own people. So. Don't they're, they're on an island somewhere up yeah. there. They're aerial and the must like be flicking up there. By themselves. Yeah, literally playing Skyblock just away. Uh, so the first team I have is the Lightnings. Lightnings are starting off the draft. They, they have the first pick in the first round, the first pick in the second round, and the first pick in the third round. That that team, you know, who they take, I don't know who they're taking, but the Lightnings have a load of PL players, great players to pick from. So if they pick correctly, this team will will win a championship. Yeah, I mean, like like we said, the PL is their own land. You know what I mean? Uh, nobody really knows what goes on there. I don't even think they know what goes on there. But to have the first overall pick in PL, you're going to set your team up for success. You're going to be able to draft – seemingly the best player in the league or the most active i think i think i looked earlier tuck just tuck has the mo- second most grim points in the league which coming from a pl player unbelievable to have the second most at 500 or something around there it uh scrim points in pl again unreal to finally you know what i mean not finally but to see them moving up and start scrimming like that it's it's cool to see i just hear 500 scrim points i didn't even know the numbers went that high for scrim <laughs> points my <laughs> lord <laughs> I mean, yeah, to continue on from that, I mean, I have two other teams that I could just say real quick. The Dodgers, they have the second pick for the next, for the second round set, you know, Dodgers and Pandas, they basically have two, the top three teams right there have just the best picks, and yeah. they have whoever they want to pick for the whole entire PL League, and remember, PL is literally their own land. They have their own, 
great mechanical players and etc. So all three of those teams just they they have a whole lot to pick from. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like I said, or like you said, it's a great spot to be in to have those three picks. Get who you want. I mean, I think the first round of PL players, all those players are probably. I mean, everybody in PL, they're probably all so close in skill. Like you're gonna draft based off of chemistry and who you think is gonna work best with who. So. Good for those players. If if they don't have a returning PL player, I mean, good luck to the FMs of those teams to 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 start that team and pick who we want to be your probably your captain at that point. But I mean, a great position for them to be in. Um, I don't know, at PL people. I know you're up there. I don't know if you can hear me all the way down here in FL. Make some trades. Get spicy up there. <laughs> My lord, making it hard for our job out here. We got to talk about you guys and your no trades, and we got to talk about what's looking good for you. But PL, I mean, it's like it's like a Sahara desert in PL. Like there's just nothing. They're just out there doing scrims only. They, they're they're, they're just doing trades. their own things. <laughs> I think if I'm, I'm not mistaken. I think PL picks couldn't be included in other trades. I think it had to be PL for PL. So it might be why it's not so spicy. Ah, uh, make but, it happen. Yeah. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> we'll I want see what happens. Next I want season. spice. I want the drama. <laughs> yeah, the Lack Shark. Lack Shark confirmed it down there in, in chat. So, what you got for us, Zach? Is that it for all um, of them? Or? That's it for all of them. Now we're on to retention review. Ah, uh, yeah, we're moving on to the next section. Uh, next, next section. Words are hard. Um, but uh, uh, the retention reviews. We get to talk about you guys, the players. Um, who gets to stay? Who's staying on a team? Which is um, probably a good honor for you if a team asks you or says, "Hey, you were good. We want you back." It's probably a good honor. Probably feels good. Uh, my team didn't have an FL team, so it's going to be my only time mentioning it. So that's going to be my excuse for not getting retained. It's definitely <laughs> not because I'm bad at car soccer. Uh, I have built an excuse for it. But moving on, like I said, we're talking about them again. Who's Spittle Ball? Um, who's fan favorite in the Bears' den? Uh, being their only retention, FL retention, and they that that's pretty much their secured player that built, seems like they're going to build around. Uh, previously mentioned, they had two top five picks to build to use. Um, she's out to prove that she's capable of of being being the 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 player i don't, I don't know <laughs> but uh that, that there she's making huge strides this off season um where she's at mechanically where she's at ball game sense wise um i think she's an, a quite insane player so i uh i know we're bringing i'm basically burning up her again but uh, i think she's just that good that big of a difference maker and it's pretty great that uh they retained her and just shows their confidence in her yeah that bears franchise it's it's one of those teams you see a lot of players getting retained on um, you, you, they love their community. They love their sense of home. So again, if you're if you're being kept on that that Bears team, you know you got a home for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that that, that Bears team guys. has yeah that Bears team has a outstanding community. And if you're on the Bears, uh, you're just fan favorite. The Bears are yeah. literally fan favorite. It's the other it, Zach. It's, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Zach, the owner. <laughs> Sorry, there's another one of you. He just doesn't have a V on his name. <laughs> Sorry, Zach. <laughs> um but uh to move on we got pretty much the entire spartans roster in fl um they uh retained three players being bowler thimblewit and tordad i believe i'm pretty sure it's what it's what i'm saying on my end so if i'm wrong argue with the wall i don't know what to tell you uh You're correct <laughs> all right uh newly acquired franchise man acquired franchise manager piggy buggy uh joins the spartans and heavily retains their entire most of their team their FL squad to right their wrongs from last season with they made playoffs in both twos and threes and didn't make either of the finals at which it, it as someone that also had that experience it it's not it's not ideal it, it kind of hurts um but I mean having keeping all three of those players you know they have one thing going and that's chemistry uh yep. if there's one thing I know about them is they are a solid core of three they all love to play each other they all know what each other's doing and chemistry I think is by far the most underrated thing in all of Rocket League. Knowing what your player, what your teammate's going to do and pretty much just having a feel for them and, and trusting them, I think is one of the most insane things. So I think he, them keeping their three and also pairing it up with Piggy just shows their trust in each other and that they want to be together. Yeah, and, and um, looking at it too, like you said, all, the, all four of those players are confirmed on their team according to the sheet that I have, and they have a pick in the second round. So, I mean, they're going to have five. They're going to pick who they want. They're going to take that one pick talk about earlier get who they want and then like you said chemistry is everything so they'll pick the one player that meshes well with those four people and ride off to the playoffs <laughs> yeah, just like you guys said chemistry is the number one thing in rocket league and 
you have chemistry, you're going to win a lot of games. And I've come up, I've literally had that when I'm in ML. A lot of teams that have chemistry, they I play against them and they're always beating me. So chemistry goes a long way. And uh, yep. let me get some. Again, Rocket League's hard, so might as well trust someone while you're doing it. That's the only, the only way to get through this. It's, uh, it's good teammates. Uh, to move on, we got the Pirates. I may or may not be dunking on the Pirates in this one. Um, sorry. So if you're a Pirates, don't hold your breath. Uh, <laughs> El, they're retaining two players. El Rabo, who's an 8-cell, and Stickley, who's a 9-cell. And after a beyond disappointing season of pretty much their entire franchise, um, but definitely an FL, the Pirates are choosing to, to retain a mid- uh, and high salary level player showing that they, they trust them to hopefully try and fix this that former season because after a 23 and 77 overall record you definitely i do mean I, the one thing the, the thing about rock bottom is there's only one way so hopefully they, they can then that's up so hopefully they can uh fix it going forward uh, maybe maybe not so bad this sorry hey look like you said there's only one way it's up uh, bounce back season, time to prove yourself, get your picks in. You got two people you're building around. So you, like you said, you trust those players. You know what I mean? I, I casted a couple of these games last season. These, these, this team, it, it wasn't a bad team. I mean, they might've come out on the wrong end of things, but they're ready to move on. They're ready to move up. And I think they're going to make a bounce back season with those two players as their core. Yeah. I mean, a 23 and 77 overall record. That's not very good, but you know, you got to move past that and you gotta, you gotta start building now. You know, I talk about building a lot, but the pirates, they have a lot of picks and, you know, change that record. That record will flip around and be 77 and 23 by the Ooh. time the end of the season comes around. So I see it. I see hot, it happening. Hot take. Somebody mark it down. Exactly. Right, hot take. It down. If he's wrong, if he's wrong, we all come for him. DMs. <laughs> just don't DM me. Just don't DM me if it comes true. Like if it's still the same way, just don't DM me. If, if he's wrong, he's just gonna ignore you. So don't even. Yeah. Honestly, don't even mention at that point. I'll just delete Discord. <laughs> um. All man, right. So FL. Trans- yeah. That, that, oh, that, that it. That's all I got for FL. Let's move on to AL. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get through these kind of quick here. Um, the Flames. Like we said with retentions, when you're keeping four four players, uh, you got your FM in that core of players uh, with three veteran players that have been around the league for a long time. They don't have any draft picks. They traded away their uh, AL pick. Uh, I don't know if it was for another retention or for something in another league, but they have plenty plenty of experience going into that FA pool, which has recently started to increase, um, which at the end of this podcast will almost be close. So if you're not scrimming right now, you don't have your points. Good luck. Um, but yeah, I mean, they got four, they can pick people up in FA and they have a solid four to work with. And I, I think retaining your players just shows your trust in them. Um, especially, uh, that they, they, they did it to have no draft picks. Um, yeah, I don't know. I lost in, I lost it in the sauce where all their draft picks went, but it's, uh, it's JM's crazy Roxid and DV. So if I said any of those names wrong. My apologies. Um, <laughs> that's our job is to pronounce your names wrong. But 12, two 12s and two 11 fives, they got a great core to build on. And it's definitely, definitely something they, I guess they believe in uh, themselves. And uh, hopefully it pans out for them. A lot of hopefully's out here, you know? Obviously not all these teams is going to work out for it. someone. Someone has to be at the bottom of the barrel and you just got to hope it's not them. Yeah, you know, just like you said, it's a, it's a maybe for all these teams. You know, we can never predict the futures for these teams, but, you know, Three veteran players. I hope those veteran players can step up a little bit and, you know, have a good team around them so they can, you know, change something about them. Yep. And then moving right on, man, the demolition again. I like to see these teams that are keeping four. It shows a great sense of community on these teams. Um, So, like, the demolition, another team that's had a lot of success last season all across the leagues up and down. The demos made a great run in the playoffs. I can't quite remember if they made it to championships. But I know they were late in the playoffs. I casted a couple of those matches. You got Sky sticking around. You got DJ uh, at FM and uh, and two other veterans on their team in uh, in Branch and Bla- and Blau Dog, I believe it's pronounced. Um, their salaries all over the place from ten five to twelve. So again, you you can pick pretty much whoever you want. Uh, they yeah, they can pick any player they want in FL. They can have up to thirteen more salary on their team. They can round the roster out with whoever they want. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I, I don't remember either if they made finals, but, uh, 
uh, to, to retain again retaining players that yeah, shows your trust in them. Um, uh, the four the four whole players um, pretty much gives you one more spot to have two complete teams. You never know how they're building it out, but yep. four whole players a lot to be keeping. Uh, shows a lot of trust. Just like you said, it's a lot of trust. If you can trust those four players, you can create a good team. Yep. And then uh, a team in my division, a team that, uh, you know what I mean? I, I would like to say I wish the best of success to, but I'm going to have to cheer for the shadow over the Sharks. But you got Inky, you got Big C, you got AJ Binky still on the team. These are three players that are extremely solid CL players. Uh, they got a pick in the second round. I think it's the eighth pick. Um, they can take anybody on the board again with the salary cap they got. They'll get their fourth player. They'll pick five up their fifth in uh, FA. And and it's just going to be another team for for our franchise here at the Shadow to compete, which is unfortunate. It's unfortunate for us that we have to compete with those guys. Yeah, I mean. Or girls. Uh, if, if Sorry. We're inclusive. We're inclusive right now. We're inclusive yeah. right now. Uh, but I mean that yeah, it's definitely something hard to be compete with. Uh, shows big that you're able to admit it that they're going to be a challenge. But uh, yeah, they definitely they're setting themselves up greatly to make something beautiful happen with uh with the with the freedom Sal wise. Uh, Sal I know can be a be a hard thing later in the season to come by. So as long as you get that uh, uh fixed and set early, you're setting yourself up for greatness. All I gotta yep. say is I pray for you, Flump. I play for I pray for you. I pray for you guys. <laughs> I talked to OG and the boys in AL man. Um, and then another quick one, uh, the Spectre, right? A uh, team that I'm pretty good friends with. There's a couple of their CL players, uh, but Wayne Finkel, Select Grief, and M. Koff, season Spectre players. Um, they got ninth pick in the second and third round, so they'll round their roster out with five. They got a good core. They kept three players they trust and have been around. I believe Wayne Finkel's on their, um, uh, I believe Wayne Finkel's on their, their leaderships. So again, good for them. It's very I mean, good for them, yeah. That sound, sounds good to them. Uh, Wayne Finkel, uh, as an FL guy, it's one of those names I still see around talking about. Um, so you know, I assume, I'm going to assume they're good at the game. I'm not going to be mean to anyone that's above me because obviously they're better. Knowing that I'm obviously PL ready. Um, I'm all over the place with my play style, but I'm just going to confidence when I need to and doubt on myself when I don't. But I mean, uh, they, they're setting themselves up uh, for, for great picks. Again, the retentions, it's a whole lot of trust. A lot. Of, I, there's not really much you can say outside of it's a whole lot of trust. I mean, it, it, you're you're picking these players back. Like you're you're giving them the honor of saying, "Hey, we want you. you we think you can you can do it for us. You can help us get us to the promised land, the Forsaken Championship." Yep. And then uh, I'm gonna hop right into CL here. Mm -hmm. Um, keep these things rolling so I can get up to Zach V and ML. I got a lot of talking to do. <laughs> um. One team I don't have that much for CO. I got two good ones in a sneak in a like a sleeper pick that I think's really gonna kind of come out of the woodwork this season. Um, the Pirates, right? This is this is just a team that's gonna be good. They kept four players. Um, they they made a good playoff run uh, in in CL. They kept the main core of their roster in Matrix, Drag, uh, uh, Trampling Cow, and Dragon King, and they have um, excuse me for not being super prepared, and they have Miller Ball. Uh, they're all high salaries. They're going to have to pick up some of these lower players. Um, but sometimes you need those guys. Well, I mean, every team's going to need those guys. But, again, they 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 know they have to draft low. They don't have to worry about who they're drafting. But they kept that core roster. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, low sales are some of the most underrated things in um, uh, in league play. Uh, I think it can make or break your season. Uh, having those people you can trust uh, be filling so you don't go over play time on certain players. So, Having them around is uh, so making those right picks to have them around is, is more than ideal for them. So hopefully they they get it and figure it out. Yeah, they're running it back with the same team and with a strong playoff. When they were strong playoff contenders last season, they're going to bounce back even harder with this new pick. So I'm psyched. I'm very excited to see where the Pirates are going to go. Yeah, I'm going to sneak uh, put my sneaky good pick here in the middle. Um, I think that one of the best teams that's going to come out of Seal this season. This is my spicy hot take. Uh, again, coming in, uh, the Spectre on both my AL and CL list. They kept four players. Smooth uh, and Deppy have a CL season under their be uh, belt now. Uh, they moved up from AL last season. They got Lion Lord at the helm as their CL captain. He's been CL captain for as long as I've been in the league. Um, and they have Quick Claw, who they picked up late in the last season, a very, very fundamentally solid player that I, I've scrimmed a lot. Um, 
So I think this team's going to really turn it around. They're going to get a lot of those cobwebs off. They're going to figure it out, and they're going to they're going to make a good run this season. Can you stay on that, Zach? No, I mean I don't really know anything about the Spectres personally, <laughs> but like. But the way Flump is saying it, I got to believe his word. I got to believe his word. That's Flump's hot take. That's the one you guys can message me about. I'm moved. Honestly, I'm a tear to my eye. Spectre going to the championship. He's convincing me. (laughs) Yeah, he's already confirming it. He's locking it. He's he's, he's locking it in. He didn't say it, but he's locked it in. Hot take. Someone take the hot take right now. Hot take. Hot take. Write it down. (laughs) Put it on on the board. We're just keeping it. And here we go again. Me having to, to, to talk about the Tropic Division. I think this Tropic Division, the division that I'm in, is gonna be a force to be reckoned with this season. It's going to be a dog fight in the Tropic. Uh, there's a lot of good teams, but the Flames, they kept three 14-5s on their team. They got Justin at uh, 13-5, and they have the first pick in the second round. They're going to pick the best 13 they can find. They're going to they're gonna solidify their team. And you know what I mean? Like when you When you can start your second round pick, have your five players, and have all your salaries confirmed, I'm scared to play this team. I've said it to my FM. I've said it, said it to the guy who's captaining for our uh, CL team. I'm scared of this team. I'm terrified of them. I won't show that on the field, uh, but you can delete this part of the podcast so they can't listen to it. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, hopefully they're not in here because uh, they're here alive. Yeah. He, he's not scared at all. He's confident. He's going to he's gonna dunk all over you guys. Be afraid. He's coming. <laughs> and that, guess... that's, that's oh. all I get. Unless you got something to say, Zach. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I, don't, I have nothing to say. I don't want to get beat up, so. I had, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I try not to talk about the the uppers because obviously they're better than me, and I ain't got much. Zach, take us away to ML. All right, ML. The main team I had to put on here is the Sharks. The Sharks basically keep the same team every season, and I love the way they keep the same players. You know, it's very, very good community on the Sharks team. You know, with Addy, Water, Dimensions, and Raspberries. That team is going to be great this season coming up, and they have a third round pick to solidify the number five spot on that roster. So. Whoever they pick up, they're joining a very, very good team. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, uh, here's another Tropic Division team. The team I got to play. Well, I don't have to play. Hopefully, I don't go to ML. That's big scary. Um, but for Ray and Haim, unfortunate for them. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely, definitely one of those scary teams. Uh, that You know, it's one of those teams that are building stuff. And you don't – you love to see it, but as a person, when you have to play them, you don't love to see it because you got to face them. Yeah, I, I could uh, I could 100% agree on that. You know, that's the type of team where they may not look like they don't have a lot, but that chemistry, just like we talked earlier, is just right there. So that's going to take them a long way. A, so let me. Of, oh, oh, I got I got one of one of my first days in MLE. I was in a, a in house scrim with Raspberries, and I the things he was doing with his car is the most mind blowing thing to me. And the fact that that's only ML doing that, there's still a whole other division above it. That's even more terrifying to me. Anything else, Flump, or continue? No, like you, you nailed it, man. That Sharks is a community team. Uh, I mean, all their teams, I'm pretty sure, other than AL, is retaining four. So, I mean, and they retain three. So, I mean, a great team that Audi's built over there on the Sharks. All right, next team I have on the list, a very, very team that I think that most people didn't really know about, but I would say the Knights. The Knights are a very type of sleeper team. You know, they have Stizzy, very great player. J.K. Frost, East Coast Ghost, and Cameron, all very good players. The four of them, they unfortunately don't have picks by what I'm looking at at the Emily draft order, but them four on a team and a free agent pickup, that is a very, very good playoff team right there. Um, yeah, again, with all these retentions, there, a lot of teams are keeping a lot of players up here. Um, so you mean a, a lot of teams trusting and just running it back with a lot of the same players. Uh, I think that's pretty crazy in that. A lot of a lot of teams not not really came by the draft. They're going, we want these players to build around. Yeah, and if I can fact check you, Zach, they do have one late second round pick. So, okay. I mean, on top of all the stuff you said, and they get to draft someone, they don't have to wait till FA. Scary. It was very scary, very scary. And a lot of people don't understand that Stizzy and J.K. Frost are very two good players, and they yes, could they lead are. their team to a very, very cha- – they could lead them to a championship. On to the next one. Let me make it quick. The Bears. <laughs> Everybody knows the Bears. It's the Bears. They're bad. The Bears. Uh, the Bears. Bears. With the retentions of Judgmental, they just brought up A.K., Y.Z., and I don't want to mispronounce this, but Exul. I don't know Ooh, how to I pronounce it. I believe it is. Exulu. They're all the perfect salves for that team. 
all of them. And that team right there, the Bears, is a very big, big sleeper team in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's a community team. Uh, you said AK, you nailed it. AK moved up. You know, I mean, they're going to start with four. I don't know how many picks they have, but I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure they're running it back with a good core of their base too. Yeah, they have the 28th pick. They have all the 20th pick for the second and third round, so they have a good team to build right there. I think yeah. they, I think they might have a record for most retentions. They, they really love their team. And you going in in that server, you're you're seeing Bears players there. They're everywhere. You can't, you can't hide from them. The Bears are coming. Especially Zach. Zach is everywhere, so you'll find him somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, on to PL now. PL, PL. There really wasn't a lot of retentions. You know, as we said, PL is their own land, so. P.O., everybody in P.O. loves to move around. Uh, the Hurricanes, number one, Delta. Delta is their own ret- only retention, but I love Delta. I'm assuming everybody else loves Delta. He's a great person, and Delta is ready to build off on that team. Yeah, uh, and then I think the list I have shows them having Lefty Llama, and he went to Jared, too, using their first retentions. I didn't see that. Yeah, I, like I said, it's stuff. P.O., it's, it's their own land. <laughs> it's their own land but if that's the team that they're rolling with and they're just retaining and drafting one player and i mean that see them back in the championship again and i mean uh that retaining an appeal player you can assume they're good with the sticks on the uh, rocket league uh it's pretty much pretty much all i have to say on that they're in peel for a reason all right on to the next team the rhinos red and electro zx both of them amazing PL players, amazing people to be around with. And the both of them with another player, that is or actually two more players, that'd be such a great team. Yeah, I mean I don't I don't know how PL salary works. It's again their own league. Yeah. We love we love to meme on PL about how it's their own land. But uh, like you said, I mean you nailed it. Red and Electros, uh to, to have those two players as your core, pick around them. I mean, Red's been around forever. I, I don't know Electros as much. I know they made a great run in threes last season. Um, so to see those two run it back, unbelievable. I, 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 I again, it's just, they're, they're PL. It's, it's a small pool to pick from because there's not that many PL players. So retaining them, it, it goes a yeah. long way for them. And you still got the players to draft from, especially because none of them trade away any picks because you can't really. Uh, but that, I mean, it's pretty much you get your 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 guys that you want. And then you just get to build around that, so it it's pretty much free game up there. I feel I hope at least because I know last year there was dominance out of I believe the Hive, so I hopefully hopefully um, that dominance gets spread around a little bit. Yeah, and then finally Flump told me about him earlier before we started this live. <laughs> uh, the Shadows, Prosperity, Two K, and Thunder. I don't personally know those players and how they play, but by the way, Flump was telling me earlier before we started the stream, they're very good players, and I could see the Shadows going somewhere in PL this season. Got some insider trading right there. Yeah, no favorites here. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention it just to get us mentioned on stream in our one category. <laughs> uh, but P2K returning as our captain. Uh, we liked it. Me and Ray like to have him around. We love him. Thunder, a great player. They made a great run last season. We made the playoffs. Didn't make it quite far in the playoffs. But being able to keep two players like we talked about earlier that have good chemistry, like being around each other, like to, to you know what I mean? They're very active in talking about who they're drafting. So, I like to see these guys stick around. I hope to keep them around for a while. And, uh, I mean, we're just ready to get these guys going. Yeah, hopefully they do the car soccer better than everyone else in PL. <laughs> yeah. So it's all about the car soccer at the end of the day. Uh, all right. Now, uh, that was all the retentions review. Uh, all the players are good enough to stay on their team. Good for them, honestly. I'm jealous. <laughs> now, uh, now we get to the juicy stuff. The high yes, prospects. Sir. These are the people not retained, but they are still good at the game. They're 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 up for grabs. To see where they can go. The hot prospects. Um, yeah. starting it off with the hot prospects. Um, I am going to be cheating on this one. Not technically an FL player, but it, as of like th- three days ago, he was an FL player. <laughs> so I'm giving him his flowers. Brand Bino, now a ten five sal. Um, get into that. Uh. He doesn't really count anymore, but I'm just here to give him his flowers. Um, he's been grinding this game, uh, the, the the Rocket League, ever since uh, last season. He he finished the season with a 7-5 Sal. Just a couple months ago, he was a 7-5 Sal. And ever since then, he's been a man on a mission. A last Just last week, he was up to a 9 Sal. 
before in in one week having a 35 and 9 record in scrims giving himself a one and a half a whole one and a half uh, sal boost to get him all the way up to al just before the draft uh, j- this place he's been he's been wanting to go up to he's been fighting to get up there uh, he's 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 good at the game he's got the mechs he's got the he's got the skills um so he finally after a long grind was able to have a one and a half jump sal jump in and literally a transactional week period uh which That's... i think is, is is pretty impressive there's not a lot i can add to that i mean he gave us the rundown and all i can say impressive good for him welcome to al Good luck, buddy. You know what I mean? Uh, if if that's the way he's playing, he's getting drafted. I can almost guarantee it. Area, yeah, if that that's the way he's playing, then hey, I'll see you in ML in two seasons, right? <laughs> <laughs> pass right. If you pass right by me. Go ahead. Yeah. He's gonna grind his way up there. But Flump, yeah. Flump will be like, hey, yeah, see you later. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be double flip resetting right past him now, all the way up. <laughs> but yeah, it shows his determination. He's one of the hardest working people in the league to get up there. So uh, congrats to him. Uh, moving on, we got Monster Jammers, a nine-five Sal, purely because he has an he has three hundred and fifty-seven scrims played, three hundred fifty-seven percent, uh, uh, three hundred fifty-seven scrims. That's a lot of games to be playing, and to do that and have a over fifty percent with a fifty-eight percent win percentage. He's doing a heck of a job while he does it. Uh, that's impressive to say the least. Um, you also know he's dedicated to the game. He's always ready to play. He's a showing up and he's winning um he's at nine five south so who knows how long he's going to be here he keeps winning like that but um to, to have that much game time and um it, he shows he's grinding yeah i i mean the the, the hot prospects we're given all the information we got them all in our notes uh, it's not a, there's not a lot i can add to quilly's notes here i mean again 357 scrim matches unbelievable number Love to see the activity in the league. And, and again, these players that are playing a lot, holding above 50%, they're going to be moving up the ranks. They're going to only be improving. Yeah, you know, I look at it as if, you know, the FL people, they, they want to improve. They want to get better. So I feel like the more matches they play, and let's say they move up to AL, the more matches they play in AL, the better they're going to get. So, you know, that is a lot of games. And <laughs> actually, that is very, very amount of games. But... I got to give it to Monster. He's going to be a great player this season by the way you talk about him. Uh, yeah, uh, he's a big player, a uh, great player. I've seen him ever since I joined the league. Uh, he's been getting better and better, so uh, good for him. He's standing out, and i uh, giving him a shout-out. Um, to uh, continue, we are going on to the last player in FL for Hot Prospect. Is assuming it's Azzy. I don't know if it's Ozzy, but I'm going to assume it's Azzy, um, who is a 9-sal. They are showing out in their scrims. For sure. And 147 matches played. They have put up the most consistent stats I have seen. They have a hundred or uh, they have two hundred and seventy-three goals, a hundred and eight assists, and two hundred and five saves. Um all with an average score of five forty one per match. Um to do that in hundred and forty seven scrims matches is I think that just shows consistency and a high skill level. Um, I think they are, without a doubt, one of the most well-rounded and consistent players in all of FL. Yeah, I mean, look, you got the numbers. You got the facts. I can't argue them. I didn't look them up. Not going to look them up, but I trust you. So, uh, I mean, those numbers, super impressive. Good for you, Azzy. Can't wait to see where you go in the draft. Yeah, Azzy, I can't wait to see you play. You know, with 273 goals, that shows a lot. That shows you're a very, very good player. So, can't wait to see you play the season. Um, yeah, that, that that rounds it out for my hot prospects. Um, big shout outs to you three. Um, you're standing out uh, to move on to AL with Flumsky. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of rapid fire these. Um, uh, just to just keep us moving along here, these players are gonna get drafted. I know they are. Um, so the way I kind of did mine doing these AL and CL is I tried to pick one person from every salary. Unfortunately, one of these players moved up, so I lost my 11 salary. Uh, but starting at Tyler Bob's. Uh, rocking up 340 scrim points right now in the last 60 days. Very active player. Make a great addition to any team at 12-5. Uh, a pass CL player would be a good look for any team that's looking to like have a, a AL player start their season and then maybe move up into their CL ranks. Um, CL ranks and, and help round out that team if they can afford them on that team. Um, so, I mean, at a 12-5 style with that much activity, a great person to have on your team. Um, like I said, I'm just going to kind of rapid fire these, keep us moving along. My 12 salary pick was King Host, a veteran uh, 
to the league since MLD, uh, since we were a doubles league. Um, he's still extremely active. He recently just dropped down from CL. So now he's 12 salary, but he has experience in the league being in various leadership positions. He's an extremely solid player. He's there when you need him. So again, at 12 salary, if you're adding this guy to your team, another player that could quite possibly move back up into CL, um, move into 11-5, we got Wiggle. Another very active player, 200 scrim points. Win rate's kind of gone down to the 50% range, but when you hit that many scrim points, you're going to kind of average out anyway, especially when you're at that 11-5. Hold over a goal a game, uh, fifty over a 52 sprocket rating in every game, so above average player. Um, and if you need a hybrid player, he's playing both modes. Uh, Jelly was my 11 salary, he's now an 11-5, running a 63% win rate in twos right now, close to two goals a game and two saves a game uh, through their scrims. Unbelievable. Another person that's just going to round out a, a, a roster very well. And then our, my 10-5 pick is this guy, Com. Um, guy's got 278, 287 log twos matches in the last 60 days. Might not have the best win rate, but with that acti activity level, you can build chemistry with your team, which we talked about a lot earlier. Build that chemistry. You can take your team to the next level. If you're just there, AL is, is the league where chemistry probably matters, if if not the most, the second most, to where you can really build a team around that chemistry. Very humble of you to say that the most important for chemistry. It's cool. Us FL guys, we just we, we just see ball hit ball I, down I here. I said if not the top. <laughs> it's, every, it's important in every league. Don't get uh, me wrong. No, but FL just I sees think, ball hit ball. That's all we do. Yeah. <laughs> um. And then again, so I can get Zach V back on the mic. I'm just going to pal the same thing, plow through these CLs. Um, it's the same setup. Try to get somebody from every uh, every salary. My 15 salary is a former teammate of mine, Nick's. Um, he's got one season. We picked him up late in the season last season. But now he moved from 13-5 when I picked him up to a 15 salary. He's ready to go to ML. He is rocking a 69% win rate. Nice. In twos. Uh, right now in scrims so he's starting to make his presence known he helped me out a ton last season he's going to be a great player for any team um my 14 five salaries matthews uh he's a top he's top 10 in all three scrim stat lines right now goals per game assists saves all the good stuff he's top 10 right now a great player at 14 five he's not super he's i'd say not super uh uh expensive at 14 five but he is but there's a lot of teams that can draft him um I don't know how Caliber is a 14, but he is. So whatever team gets Caliber on their team, another former person that I know a lot um, from the Foxes, he's a great guy. He plays a lot. He's extremely talented. I think he actually just moved to PC too, so watch out for that. Um, uh, a new player to the league, Keedy, at a 13-5. Well-rounded in twos and threes, playing both 13-5 is an important salary in CL with a lot of these teams retaining – um, high salaries, these 13s and 13 fives, they're going to be gone quick. You expect to see a lot of those guys go in the first round. And a guy that just moved up from AL, my at 13, he's come to a lot of um, CL tryouts when he was still in AL, and he was putting a lot of us to shame. More importantly, me. He put me to shame. So this guy's going to be rocking it up in CL. I don't expect him to stay at 13 very long, but he's 13 for the draft. So teams, watch out for him. Honestly, I think you have stock in these people. How well you're selling them to me right now? I think I think you got some investments going on here. <laughs> Somebody said in chat, caliber caliber should be a 19. I don't disagree. <laughs> have a, have a have a word with the sprocket. Get get that style changed. <laughs> Sus. Uh, all right, so that's I'd... all I got for CL man. I just wanted to rapid fire through this. Get you back on the mic, Zach V. Yeah, all right, good. I guess I'll rapid fire through my picks. And you know, I hope I don't. I'm definitely gonna get a bunch of DMs later. Nah, I'm gonna hop into so. a VC with the people that I talk to. <laughs> but uh, my first person for hot prospect is M Massimo, a 16.5 Sal. You know, playing with this kid, in my opinion, he's the real deal. He gets it done. He's made a huge name for himself. In only 90 games, he has 160 scrim points with four. He shot the ball 443 times with 179 goals. It, it's crazy. I play with this kid. He's very mechanical, and he, he gets it done. Uh, oh, you want to say anything? I was going to say, I mean, they, they, they have your seal of approval. They got to be great at the game. That's, that's <laughs> the Zach B. Seal. Stamp it. <laughs> uh, on to the next one. Everybody knows this player. Skyler. 
I have my Skyler. I have Skyler as a hot prospect. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna hear it later, but you know, Skyler is a very, very underrated in my opinion. He's he's fun to play with. He's amazing. He he gets it done. He has a 68 percentage win rate, and you know that oh takes you goodness. very far. That takes you very far. And he doesn't play a lot most of the time. So Skyler, 16.5 salary, gonna make it on a good team. I don't think we need to pump Skyler's tires up anymore. Yeah. Uh, the, the <laughs> Man's head, already in the clouds. The head and the head and the tires are inflating as we speak. Uh, yeah. uh <laughs> next on this, I don't know if anybody knows him, but BZ, a 16.5 style. Most all actually no, it wasn't BZ. Sorry, BZ. It is Mike is my Ike. 17.5 salary. He's a veteran. Everybody knows Mike. Mike was on, you know, your team, Flump, uh the Shadows. A very, very good player. Very good player. Uh, with the Sprocket nine, which is amazing. I wouldn't be surprised if he be, if he's a top five pick this season. I yeah, I mean, he's high a, regards he's a for extremely him. good player. I watched him play last season. I think he ran every single game he could possibly play. I think we used all twelve of his. his so good for Mike. Hey, it's, uh, it's very, very high regards out of you to project him a top five pick. Oh, yeah, I would assume a 17-5 would probably be a top five pick. Hey, I mean, you never know. You never know <laughs> out here. I mean, yeah, last season I was a 13th pick as a 17-5. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> on to PL. PL, as we just said for the past hour, own land. As my first person, I have Just Tuck. I've seen Just Tuck play. An amazing player as a 20 Sal. You know, his overall record is a 249 and, uh, and 157 in total with scrims. And he's top right now for uh, scrim points at 500. So he's he's just amazing. He's just amazing. So uh, that's one of my hot to- uh, hot prospects. On to the next one, Pandy, a 19 sal, very good player. I haven't seen Pandy play that much, but with his stats of showing 1,353 shots, I would assume he's a very big offensive type of player. So I got to give it to him on that. Yeah, and fine. Oh, if you want to say anything, uh, yeah. On on Pandy, he made a. I think the Rhinos won. Somebody fact check me. I believe the Rhinos won the twos championship last season. If not, they were in the match, and that was Red and Pandy. So, you know, what I mean, if if a if a former championship player is uh, available in the draft, I don't know why you would look at that. Anything I mean, to say, cool? Uh, I mean. Uh... They're better than me at the game, so I can't give any. Uh, <laughs> They're better than all of us. Though. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm gonna take your approval of them, and I'm gonna run with it. I'm gonna die on that hill that they are great at the game. <laughs> uh, my number three, a lot of people know, but Nit Nit, outstanding player. I played him in four mans. I didn't talk after because he beat me that bad. <laughs> but a twenty salary, he's a veteran player. Nit is very known in ML, not ML. I'm sorry, PL. And he's definitely going to be a top three pick or a top five pick, you know, with an average rocket rating of 61.398 in standards, not even doubles. That's a crazy number. So that that is just a whole nother level. So Nit, Nit's going to be a top three pick. I think he's an amazing player. Absolutely. I hope you did not blink for that segment because we breezed right through that summer gun. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you're all great players. You're making yourselves look good. And we... In open net are noticing you, and that's all that matters. There's no opinion that matters. Not the FM's opinions. Our opinions are what matters. <laughs> True. <laughs> just don't uh, just don't take them out of context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if <laughs> and if you suck, it's not our fault. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> we are simply just messengers. Um, uh, d- oh, that is that for the hot prospects uh, category. Uh, we are now moving on to the championship clips. We will be well. Oh, if you've seen these clips before. No, you didn't. I don't know what to tell you. Just act like you didn't. Act like they're new to you. Um, if they're but what, what, yeah. these are clips from the championship. Uh, they, these this is the premier. This was the premier game. This is what the games that everyone, everything led up to was these games. So the clips out of these, these are from the best of the best players. So the fact that they're happening, um, just shows how important they were. The stress of the situation. You're in a championship match. Everything you fought for this entire season's on the line, and you're pulling off these moves. Um, so we got three clips for you coming up. Starting off, we have one from, sorry if I butcher this, only 26XX, um, CL match in threes, uh, Hurricanes versus Bears in game one. So roll that clip. On the backboard, Jorge's up in the air, cannot get up high enough though. And only 26, lucky bounce, goes for a flip reset, gets, gets around the one with two defenders! 
I'm gonna go to the clinic! Exclamation point P O T W. Hit it in the chat, submit it. What a flip reset by only in the opening match of the CL3's championship series. Unbelievable solo play there from the Hurricanes. Wow, I am impressed. Um, to be honest, though, flip resets, I do those with my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think what I'm not surprised about here is that it's a Hurricanes player, right? The Hurricanes player Hurricanes it was dominance. in the playoffs. Uh, I mean, that that in CL, it's unbelievable. What's scary to me is I'm old, and we're starting to see that more and more have, like in CL on the constant, which, you know what I mean? So that means I'm going the wrong way. So, I mean, for only an unbelievable shot, a great showcase on the on our show and the league because it was on stream. So, I mean, un, an unbelievable touch and, like, self-pass flip reset to himself over two defenders, I think it was. Yeah, that was just – that's a – when I was in seal, I wasn't even hitting flip resets. I was trying to hit doubles to make myself look cool. So, <laughs> he bet he definitely beat me to that. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they're definitely they're, these clips are not going to be making me feel good about myself as a FL player that likes the ball on the ground. <laughs> but uh, moving on, we have um, again, sorry about the names. I'm doing my best out here, but we have a play. It is an Iresh two Kato play. Um, it is an ML3's match, Dodgers versus Lightning. Uh, let's roll that clip. A little bit too far forward. Kato coming in for the fifty, and Irish is up in the air. A little bit more power behind it. Passes oh, to oh, Kato oh, and holds it in. Oh, and I saw this starting to develop. As soon as Erishkal comes off the wall, you see uh, you see Kato just waiting for him in the midfield. And then a fantastic angle to not only slot it by the defender, but tuck it just inside the right side goalpost there. Beautiful play by the Dodgers. And it is that teamwork that won them a championship. Again, another play, but this goes to show you that's chemistry right there. That chemistry thing I kept that chemistry chemistry thing I kept talking about, that's it right there. That player knew his teammate was putting it there and they trusted them to get right in there and finish that. That's a great team that's a great team play. That's that's the chemistry I talk yeah. about. It's beautiful to play out. I mean that's ML, that's pure speed. That's I mean a great catch by Irish Goal, a great pass and, and great awareness and like I said, speed by Cato to, to get to that ball and put it post side. Yeah, I mean, that team, I played that team in ML, and that team, their connection was just phenomenal with, you know, Yellow on that team with Kato and I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm going to call, I'm going to say E. I don't Eris. want to pronounce we it wrong. Him, we call him Erish on stream because. Oh. Erish, yeah. Nobody I knows. would say th them three that whole entire season, they were just phenomenal. So that was an amazing clip by, by the Dodgers team. And I'm jealous. I mean, if I was in that goal and seeing that shot, just like literally the ball just slowly coming to this out of nowhere, zoom that. I would, I probably would scream. I would have been screaming. Sub me out. I'm out. <laughs> That's <laughs> fear right there. Uh, great play by them. Um, and uh, rolling into the third and final clip, we have a clip by Nasty Diamond in AL, the twos match of Blizzard versus Rhinos. Dismiss bought by Venturi. Close chances once again. Nasty looking to turn the tables with the counter attack. Might be able to get the oh. double tap, and he is on the outside of the net. And the Bulls just starting to close the gap. Yeah, get it down to one goal. And if I'm the Rhinos, I have to be scared of Nasty Diamond in the air. His name is Nasty for a reason. That was disgusting off the back wall. That's AL too. Damn, what the? F double? Did you do a double? Oh my yeah. I don't. I could. Like, even that for me. <laughs> stun locked. He's stun locked. I'm literally I'm know frozen we're back. right now. I'm frozen. <laughs> like, that's, that's mind blowing. Like, even even that. Like, don't judge me. I'm FL. We're, we're going to keep going over this. I'm just an FL player. I, I pray to do doubles like that. <laughs> um, but uh, impressive play, to say the least. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? I know, I know you guys are hitting your double musty flip reset, so that's obviously not a walk in the park for you guys, but. False. Um. <laughs> No, nasty diamond, an unbelievable player. Again, that's AL, right? That's our that's that's our second rung up the ladder. That's where these players are still developing, and that's what they're developing into. That means they're gonna come see me, and I'm just gonna pass them on to Zach. Uh, I think my favorite part about that clip, other than the extreme talent by Nasty Diamond, there is it was over Omega Blaze, one of our fellow uh, <laughs> broadcasters. That's my favorite part. Props to you, Nasty Diamond. I like you for hitting that clip over Omega Blaze. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Blaze. <laughs>
Yeah, that, that, that clip was amazing. I just had nothing to say to that. Like, I wasn't even hitting clips like that. I literally could barely jump when I was, like, down in AL. So, props to him. Yeah. yeah. Impressive, to say the least. Um, great double, great finish. Uh, making yourself look good on stream in the championship game. Um, I don't know how it panned out, but doing stuff like that, I probably fared pretty well in that game. Uh, to uh, finish it off, though, that, uh, that was all the clips. Uh, thank you for everyone that submitted. Thank you for everyone that gave us the clips um you're real helpful to the show anyone going forward please make sure to send your clips in and if you're not hitting clips just get good at the game i don't know what to tell you we need clips <laughs> they, clips need keep clips. the show going so just if you do something there's there's plenty of categories guess this sal there's clip there's highlights there's uh there, there's low lights of the week hangers and bangers we got a tons of things whatever clips you think just fit send them to us we need them it, it helps us out more than you think um, and, but, uh, that wraps it up for most of the segments. Uh, we are into our final segment, zero second replay. Um, and it's pretty much just us to talk about the show, uh, or, uh the, the, the season going forward. Um, it's just pretty exciting. We're going into another season. This is a fresh start, clean slate for most teams. Um, a lot of teams are bringing back their players as we've talked about. So, uh, I think we got a, a good looking season, uh, setting up. Um, I think it's going to be some crazy plays, going to be some crazy moves. Uh, I think... Honestly, if you're not in, you're not involved in this. You better get involved in this because it, it's gonna it's gonna be a wild ride for us. And open net, we're gonna be getting crazier and crazier with it. The amount of yeah. amount of stuff we're gonna be you're talking about here. Come on, uh, but I, I'm excited for what we got going forward uh, this season. I get to play. I, we get to play again. That's it. We're playing. Yeah. We're playing rock league again. That's what we're all here for. We're here to put balls in nets and play car soccer. Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier. It's season 15. The draft is upon us. It's time to get back to work. Um, get your hard hats on, gang, because we're, we're getting after it again. Uh, props to the uh, – before that falls off and makes it um, – props to the uh, production team. Um, we're trying to get MLE2 back up and running. Excited for that. Um, again, uh, all these players we talked about, all these teams we talked about, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know what I mean? There's There's the rest of the league behind them. We just we just pick the top, you know what I mean? What's poking out of the water? We're just we're just cherry picking. That's our job. Make things exciting, and there's plenty more excitement where that came from. Yeah, I'm very I'm very excited for the season. You know, I think just any season that I start off in, you know, just having a new team and playing with new people, it's just the it's the foundation of the league. You know, I love meeting new people and I love hanging out with people. So, so I'm just very very excited for the season. Very. Everyone here is excited. I hope you're as excited as we are because it's another season of MLE, baby. It's, a, it's the, the greatest time of the year. Christmas ain't got nothing on us. This is the greatest time of the year. <laughs> MLE seasons. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for coming out. I, I, it was very abrupt for us to just show up and say we're back. But now we're back on a weekly basis. Hopefully we see you Saturday. The, the draft coming up. Uh, we got Saturday and Sunday, so be there. See who's getting picked, who's going where. It's going to be the big time place. There'll probably be more trades by then. This, this stuff ain't even finalized, what we've talked about. Who knows? Uh, but right. hopefully um, we'll see you going forward. And thank you all for coming out. This has been Open Ed, Season 2, Episode 1. Uh, have a good one. Uh, PL players, I'm coming for you. Be, be afraid. <laughs> <laughs>